Hi, Rebecca Martinez here from artscalifornia.net. Today I have the pleasure of visiting the Placer Nature Center in Auburn, California, and I'm going to introduce you to Chuck Critson yep. and Autumn Peak and Kira Green. And they're going to tell us a little bit about the Nature Center and then we're going to delve into a series of really interesting classes that bring art and nature together. So Placer Nature Center is a nonprofit in Northern Auburn on Nishinan land. It's been here for about 30 years offering environmental education and nature connection to kids and families. And it's a really special place to come uh, learn about nature, the world around you, and to get in touch with the plants and animals here in uh, the Sierra Foothills. Yeah, thanks. And Autumn, you have a specialty here of, uh, you've been working here since you were a kid, right? Yeah, I've been working here seven or eight years. Um, and my my favorite thing to do is the summer camp programs. And just recently I've been getting involved with um, more of our field trips and preschool programs, which is also really fun. And Autumn just gave us a lovely tour of everything, all the grounds here, the um, discovery areas and the places where workshops are taught, the gardens. Very, it's a very interesting and rich place to visit. Unless we have Chuck. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we've just not just started a series of workshops uh, here, kind of combining uh, the rich art tradition we have here in Placer County with nature. So we're going to be making uh, basically it's ancestral arts using just what the, what people had in the past as far as materials and tools from nature and making really unique uh, personal art objects from them. Yeah, some of the props over there look fascinating. This kind of stuff appeals to me totally. So I'm looking forward to looking at the samples. It'll be fun. I think you'll have a great time. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, the first workshop just uh, was just last weekend. The, day, uh, the next one coming up is uh, pigments, binders, and brushes, where we take raw colors from the earth, grind them up, um, and that's just part of dough. Then we go ahead and make brushes and binders and stuff from things found in nature and really take a deep dive into what it took to to apply colors to people and things and stones. And that's on April 23rd. Uh, all the classes are on the, the fourth Saturday of each month. Um, the one after that will be uh, bone and cane whistles. Uh, again, we're taking you know natural materials from the environment. Uh, you know, bird wing bones and river cane and using stone tools uh, we shape them into really uh, amazing whistles that were used for a variety of, of things in the, in the past and then we'll take time to them to decorate them make some beads and string and color them so and that's on May 28th great so, great let's have a look at the samples okay yeah all right so check here you have some amazingly beautiful samples of what you'll be covering in the workshops yes absolutely yeah, we, like I said, we're taking um, just natural pigments from the from the soil. These are you know basically red and yellow ochres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's like we're only like less than a half a mile away from a, an iron mine that used to be just like that way a short way. So this area is so rich in red soil, which anybody who lives here knows yeah. has sees it on the yeah. road cuts. Yeah. Um, the yellow actually is from an ancient native quarry in the Oakland foothills. Oh. The white is, is the, basically it's um, kale and clay from the Ione area and then charcoal. So um, again, the class is about, is about learning how to identify, process materials, grind them into a pigment. But then there's you know, all the tricks of, of applying the paint. So we, we learn how to make different kinds of brushes from local fibrous plant materials. Um, bones and coarse hair, feathers, and then tubes for, for actually spraying paint too, like doing the traditional hand wow. prints. And that's really a, an amazing thing. Can I pick these up? Absolutely. And this is a plant that everybody who lives in Placer County has seen. It's called soap root. Uh -huh. And these bul the bulbs that grow underground produce all these wonderful fibers yeah. uh, that are really strong. I've seen the soap root before. I did not know. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. This and, is lovely. And this is interesting. That's a fox leg bone uh -huh. and, and horse hair. I've, 
Well, years ago, I was asked to do a presentation at the California Academy of Sciences on, print, on ancient painting. And so I knew that they had, they had access to fox parts because the fo fox teeth were a very popular bead item in Paleolithic Europe. So they had access to foxes. We also know they hunted horses for food. So horse hair, fox leg bones, which I've made whistles out of. Uh -huh. And so I just thought, put them together and thought, well, let's make a brush out of it. This is my favorite brush so far. <laughs> we'll take the class and you will make one I of those will yourself. I will take the class for sure. And then these feather brushes are really unique. They're just basically, it's just the bottom quill, uh -huh. bottom of the quill of a, of a long brush with the top of it just inserted into it. That's and nice. after doing more research, I actually found out that that's what they used for doing the super fine illumination in medieval manuscripts, was just the tip of a brush yeah. like that. Yeah, that's nice, really nice. And then we have some hollow tubes for doing the basically spraying hand sp or mouth spraying out pigments to make certain different designs. So you would have like a little thing of the juice and then do nope. this? You actually sip it into your mouth oh. and, your, and your tongue is the reservoir and then you spray it like an airbrush and it's... I do want to try that. That sounds very interesting. Well, it's, it's neat in the fact that like everything we talked about in the class, you're using your living breath to produce the art. I mean, it doesn't Love get any that. more personal than that. Love that. And here's the soap root, right? No, actually, that's a pandanus uh, oh. seed from Hawaii. But that's how they come on. That's how they fall off the tree, and it makes a perfect little brush. Yeah, nice, beautiful. Okay, and what do we have here? Um, these are some of the some of the sample whistles that uh, people could make in their upcoming whistle class. Uh, basically, we're using bones, bird bones mainly, some fox leg bones, and then um, uh, it's called river cane. It's actually there's it's a it's a it's an invasive species, but we actually did have a, a, an indigenous cane that they use for whistles in this area that the native people use. And so basically the class is all about uh, making the tool, the stone tools to, to cut and shape these to create the, the, these unique whistles. Mm -hmm. And the, all the same processes can be used to create a flute as well. It's the same process, same techniques, you just need to add more holes and, and little things. And then we uh, you know, kind of Examples of how they're bound together and hung on on cords and stuff. So it's a. Uh, Aren't these beautiful? And that's a turkey leg bone. So you can use your Thanksgiving leftovers to make some uh, wonderful I like things. that. And then these double whistles. Nice. So. Very nice. So much fun. And then we'll also take some time too to learn how to make the string to uh, suspend them by. And that's handmade, um, it's called the plant called dogbane, the pocket cannabium. And it's a, uh, it grows around here, not so much anymore. Milkweed is also used, but we'll, we'll learn to make some string too by hand. Okay. This looks fun. Yeah, beads are really amazing. Um, in addition to just being, you know, fun to make and wear, they're really uh, an indicator of our evolution or where we actually started thinking in abstract thought because these are the oldest things that we have that we made that we found so far that had no didn't have a purpose for feeding us or keeping us worn or clothing us. So it's like that's where a lot of anthropologists believe where our, our ideas of abstract thought really mm -hmm. started forming. And uh, some of the shell beads that were found in Africa go back over 150,000 years, wow. so a long time ago. Also in Africa, they were making these wonderful uh, beads out of ostrich egg shells. Ooh, can I pick one of these up? Absolutely. Oh, Look couple. at that. <clears throat> They're quite thick. Yeah, and it's depending on which size of the, which part of the shell you're using. And these haven't been finished quite as nice as these other ones here. So you, there's a degree. These are just chipped and drilled mainly. And then there's another process of sanding them, which we'll cover in the class. Nice. Um, another uh, really simple bead to make is are these uh, white bone beads. These are just the smaller wings, wing bones of geese and turkeys that we just use very simply. You take an edge of sandstone and you grind them and separate them off and sand them, clean them out, and you've got your wonderful bright bone bead. 
and then you can alternate them with you know these other darker elements like these uh, pine nut beads which were actually made in this area by the by the native Maidu and Miwok people so um, uh, we'll be you know, if you take the class you'll have a, a chance to make all these I'm different taking kinds the of class beads. all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really fun and then we do talk about you know the meanings and and how what you wore identified you within your group within the larger world so they weren't just they, they, there was really no art back then it was all done for a purpose and a reason so we'll talk about that for a lot. your social stature or your job or whatever exactly yeah. exactly nice well thank you so much chuck and thank you um kira i can't wait to sign up for the class how how do i sign up so you just need to reach out and contact Placer Nature Center either via phone, email is even better, okay. uh, programs at placernaturecenter.org or visit our website and you can contact us, let us know you want to come and we'll put you on the list. It's pretty simple. You don't have to fill out a form or anything. Okay, okay nice. nice. And the next class is April 23rd mm -hmm. and then the fourth weekend in May. May is there anything I've missed? Is there anything else you want to mention before we say goodbye? Um, it's just, it's really a fun chance for people who love nature to really connect with their artistic side using materials that our ancient ancestors only had to use and make something really personal mm -hmm. and meaningful for themselves. Uh -huh. All right. Rebecca Martinez here from artscalifornia.net. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like us and don't be afraid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't be afraid to share with your friends. Thanks.